It was a Sunday. We had been at church. Uh, we got home uh, and pulled in, and my dad's car door was open. I, I remember that. And when I walked in into the den, uh, my dad was uh, laying on the floor. And when I saw him, there was blood and some stuff there that I remember, but he, he was alive at that point. February 17th, 1985 is a day Stephen Owens has relived in his mind for 30 years. I felt uh, just a sinking feeling in my stomach. I just knew that, you know, he was in bad shape and, and I was scared. I had no idea what caused any of it. But Stephen would soon find out. His father, Ron Owens, died in the hospital early the next morning. Five days later, Stephen's mother, Gail Owens, was arrested for her part in his murder. I got very angry quick, um, very angry, very resentful, had a lot of questions, uh, but also realized a lot of those questions I might never get the answer to. The Owens family always appeared to be the perfect Christian family. But after the murder, a different picture emerged. Gail accused her husband of infidelity and abuse, things Stephen never saw. I did not re recognize any of that. My parents were very protective of us, as most parents would be, and, and so I would expect that would be stuff that, that they would have not wanted us to, to witness. Stephen and his brother Brian moved in with an aunt and waited for the trial. It was a year almost before the trial came up, and so a lot of anger and bitterness and uh, resentment had built up. Stephen was stunned to discover that his mother had paid a man named Sidney Porterfield to kill her husband. During her trial, Stephen was called to the witness stand. I went into the courtroom that day and was not gonna look at her. Gail and Porterfield were found guilty and sentenced to the electric chair. You become numb to a lot of things. We, as a family, uh, had taken the stance that we would not get involved in any other court proceedings. Lawyers tried to appeal his mother's death sentence several times over the years. Meanwhile, Stephen missed not having his parents in his life. They're not present for things and your parents, you know, should be there. All of that continued to feed the resentment and the anger. Gail tried to contact her sons from prison. I had no desire to talk to her, and, and she would send cards to me, and I did get some of them, and then eventually I just, you know, I didn't read all of them. Stephen grew up, graduated college, and married Lisa. The couple had two sons and moved to Nashville to start a new life. There, Stephen got a teaching job and tried to put the past behind him. Meanwhile, years of appeals dragged on while Gail sat on death row. We did not communicate for over 20 um, years. I had to do what I needed to do to continue to try to move forward in my own life. One day, after sharing the story of his father's murder at school, a fellow faculty member approached him. He said, you are Stephen Owens. And I said, yes, sir, I am. He said, well, your mother has been, has attended my Bible study groups at the prison for several years. Stephen could not believe what he was hearing. How do you move 200 and something miles from where everything happened after all these years? You end up at a school and then you give your testimony and a guy that has got a connection to your mom is co-teaching with you at that school. That was one of the first things where I knew God was at work. Stephen's colleague encouraged him to restore the relationship with his mother. He would constantly say, have you ever thought about going to see her? Uh, you know, she is your mother. She would like to see you. I know she's told me. And it dawned on me one day that I'm teaching forgiveness in my home. I'm telling my kids, here's how we should live. But yet if they had asked me if I had forgiven my mom, I would have to say no. A year later, Stephen was listening to music while jogging when the song My Redeemer Lives by Nicole C. Mullen came on. He finally broke. I remember when the music came on, uh, and the next thing I knew, I was standing in my driveway. I really experienced God speaking to me and telling me, I've got you where you need to be. Now, now you know what you need to do. And I knew that I needed to go see her. Stephen made an appointment to see his mother on a Sunday afternoon in 2009. My family and I went to church that morning as normal. I remember that church service being one of the most, most emotional church services I think I've ever encountered in my life. Uh, it was almost like every song that was sang, every word that was spoken in church that day was directed right at me. And my prayer for years was, 
Lord, let me see my children. Let me see my sister. And then my, after years went by, I had one prayer. And it was, if I could just see Stephen one time, that's all I asked for. So when he came to the prison to visit, I walked away from that visit saying, Lord, you answered the prayer. The last five minutes of the visit, mom looked at me and she said, Stephen, I can't change what I've done. All I can ask is that you forgive me. And I knew that was the door that God was, had opened for me to tell her what I had come there that day to tell her, and that was that she had been forgiven. Stephen visited his mother every week. During that time, she shared with him about her encounter with Christ in prison and how she had repented. The one thing that I, I came to learn was that there's a difference in going to church in a genuine relationship with, with Jesus Christ. And I remember one day, I cried for eight hours. It was a whole day. I felt like I was dehydrated by the time it was over. And the tears were from the very pit of my stomach and my heart and all that had happened and the choices I had made. And could God really forgive me? Was anybody going to ever love me again? And um, I got up from there and I said, God, only with you can I do this. Gail's execution day was finally set in 2010. She had 72 days to live. Then Tennessee Governor Phil Bredesen called a press conference and made a stunning announcement. Gail's attorney called Stephen with the news. One of the attorneys just said he has granted life with parole and he's given her a thousand days towards that. I, I was blown away. I mean, you know, it's it's one thing to get a phone call like that and and hear that your your mom's not gonna be put to death. It's another thing when you get a phone call like that and you realize that there might be hope that she might walk out one day. That hope became reality less than two years later when Gail walked out of prison in September 2011. Gail now works for a company that helps rehabilitate former prisoners. Stephen and Gail have restored their relationship and Gail is hopeful that others will be mended one day as well. It's a day-to-day -day journey to reestablish that relationship but it is well worth every tear you shed. It's well worth every laugh that you have. And it's well worth every time you look into the eyes of your grandsons. We serve a God who made it all come together. Stephen and Gail share their story of love, forgiveness, and redemption in their recently published book, Set Free. There's a freedom in knowing Christ and being able to know that you are forgiven. And such grace and mercy was given to me. I desire that for everybody, for the whole world. Forgiveness is not forgetting. None of my family will ever forget the loss and the things that happened. But in Him, we do have a freedom and we can walk free.